Thank you for joining me tonight. We're at the Haggerty Museum here in Golden, Colorado. And we're here showcasing Colorado State University's EcoCar 3 Camaro. It is a 2016 Chevy Camaro that in a previous four-year competition that was um, sponsored by the Department of Energy and General Motors, uh, we were tasked with building a hybrid electric performance vehicle. The EcoCar Challenge is a four-year design competition. It's all student-built project, and um, with that, we are given a lot of components and some freedom to design what type of hybrid electric vehicle we wanted to. I believe the EcoCar competition in various forms has been going on since the late 80s. The original one was called the Methanol Marathon. I do recall that. Colorado State's been a part of it since EcoCar 2, which was where we built a, a hydrogen-powered hybrid vehicle. And then this is EcoCar 3, which was the next four-year competition. Everyone got the same vehicle. We had access to a lot of very similar components that we got to choose from. And uh, what was unique about this one is they got to choose kind of on a sliding scale whether they wanted to be more performance than eco or vice versa or somewhere in between. And so CSU was trying to meet the stock vehicle performance but be more economical and that was our goal. The decisions that we made is we took out the stock V6. We put in a uh, four, -cylinder, uh, four cylinder engine and made it that with behind that, we separated the transmission from the engine and put a electric motor and a clutch system in order to decouple those two in different driving modes. So our aim was to increase fuel economy and also performance, and it definitely achieved that. We're trying to build a performance vehicle that has you know, good acceleration and also good handling and lateral Gs that were similar to or improved from the stock Camaro. And so that was definitely a challenge because as you walk around to the back here, you'll see that we had a huge weight difference from the stock Camaro. Um, students fabricated this lithium iron phosphate battery pack and it's probably in like the 500-ish pound range and so that puts a lot of weight on the on the rear axle which was not uh, the same thing in the stock vehicle. In addition to that we have some high voltage controllers, um, the stock uh, Camaro fuse panel and some other uh, APM or the power management for the DC to DC converter for using some of the electronics in the vehicle with the high voltage pack. And it was designed specifically for quick discharge. When you're building a battery pack for a vehicle like this, you're, you're either wanting a, you know, a high volume of battery storage or you're wanting it to be able to discharge quickly. And that's a benefit for this and because we do have an internal combustion engine to supplement with that we wanted that energy fast so that we could perform better and weren't necessarily concerned with range. In its all electric mode, if we weren't running the internal combustion engine, it's probably about a 12 mile range battery, which is tiny by comparison to a modern electric car. So all that made it for a challenge for students to figure out how are we going to get a car that still performs well in, in some of the dynamic driving events that we did, especially in slalom and such, with all this extra weight kind of thrown around the vehicle. So there's upgraded performance aspects to the suspension. Um, that was done by some suspension engineer students. And uh, in addition to that, there is a strut tower bar that also um, stiffens up the front suspension as well. So for maintaining everything, we got everything turned off. But um, you know, this is the stock, stock in, or, um, head unit controller that does have some features that we can access through there. Um, main features that are really different from a stock vehicle are some of the high voltage stop like this high voltage stop button here on the dash is going to disconnect that uh, battery pack from the entire system in case there's any kind of issues like uh, you know fire or um, high voltage discharge of some sort and then this uh, this screen over here was used for looking at some of the state of charge of the battery and we could actually do some i believe we could look access some of the coding programs through there at least as a visual display but um, typically at events where we wanted to know a lot of information someone would be sitting in the passenger seat with a laptop kind of looking at that stuff. This is a low voltage cutoff switch for the, uh, the subsystem that starts the vehicle but doesn't run the electric motors. I want to say it's probably about another thousand pounds to the stock vehicle. There's a slight weight reduction going to the four cylinder over the V6, but that was definitely overcome with, uh, with this large, uh, this is an inverter that inverts the AC voltage from the electric motor to DC so that it can store battery, uh, so it can store that energy in the battery pack in the rear of the vehicle. When we separated the engine from the transmission and then added a whole nother, you know, about 13 inches of 
motor, clutch, and kind of a bell housing assembly. You have all those different components trying to be in a straight line to operate properly, but unfortunately because of the weight of the components, they started to sag over time. And when they sagged, they became misaligned, therefore burning out the clutch assembly. And so um, that was common to a lot of other competition vehicles from the other universities who chose this same type of architecture. But, uh, so it was not unique to us, but it was definitely a problem. Total combined, 375 horsepower. I want to say probably total investment is in the high, probably three quarter million dollar, I think when it's all said and done. Its max fuel economy was 35 miles to the gallon. And uh, it had slightly, it had slightly better than stock, the stock V6 performance in quarter mile and some of the, the, the lateral acceleration events or some of the slalom events, they did pretty well in that as well. So a little better than stock, so. It, it meet and exceeded most of the goals that we had for it. And our team is currently on EcoCar, uh, the EcoCar Mobility Challenge, or it could be EcoCar 4, but um, where we're tasked with designing a hybrid electric drivetrain with autonomous driving features into a brand new 2019 Chevy Blazer.